G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about what wheels and tyres we chose for our Land Cruiser 200 series. Why? Touch on a little bit about the weights of the wheels from upgrading from the standards and the pros and cons of both. So keep watching today's video to find out a bit more. Okay guys, so we'll start with the wheels we chose. We chose the Method uh, Racing wheels. These are a NV305 in a matte black, and they are an 18 inch rim. So it's sticking with the standard size there, but we have gone an inch wider. So they are a nine inch wide rim. And further to that as well, they have a positive 25 mil offset. So the cruisers come with a positive 60 mil, We've gone down to a positive 25 and it brings the tyre right out to those guards which in my opinion makes it look a whole lot better and it allows you to fit a wider rim and wider tyre as well. So this here is another reason why we chose these rims. Uh, with the positive 25mm offset you can see here that these tyres are right out to these guards. You can just see some of the sidewall here but you can't see the treads so still legal um, but pushes them right out, gives them a bit more clearance on the inside and uh, makes the car look a whole lot better. Another thing to consider with these wheels as well is we have got a GBM upgrade on this car so we had to consider the weight rating of each of the rims so these come in at 2500 pounds which is approximately 1134 kilos so putting all these four wheels together that is sufficient to hold our GBM upgrade but that's another thing to consider if you are looking at aftermarket rims you need to consider whether or not you get a GBM upgrade and to make sure that the wheels can hold the load rating that your car is rated to. So moving on to the tyres, we are running a BF Goodridge all-terrain tyre. Uh, a couple of reasons I chose this tyre. The first one is the size. Uh, BF Goodridge only makes this tyre in the 305-65-18 size. So um, in the metric terms, it's about 33.6 inches, so a little bit closer to 34 inch there. And um, obviously a 305 mil wide. Uh, the other reason we chose this tyre, it's a strong construction, it's got a strong sidewall, um, they're proven. I know that there's some debate about which ones are better and whatnot, but this is my uh, my fifth set of BF Goodridge now, and I've never had a drums with, never had a blowout, never had any damage, so uh, so far enjoying these tyres. Again, same as the rim, you've got to consider the load rating as well. So this uh, has a load rating of uh, about 1450 kilos and a speed rating of about 170 kilos. So well and truly enough for what we plan on doing with it. Um, so overall, it's been a great tire so far and we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we brought over the stock tire. This is a stock uh, Land Cruiser tire. This is off our car here, which is a 2014 Land Cruiser 200 series Sahara. So the Sahara's come out stock with these 18 inch alloys. Um, when you compare the ratings on the tires though, uh, they come out with Grand Trex, uh, Dunlop AT25, which is a 285-6018. So these tyres here are only capable of holding about 1250 kilos. Although that is enough to hold our GBM, it's just slightly less than the BF Goodridge at 1450. The other thing as well, the speed rating is significantly higher on these stock tyres. So looking at speed rating of about 240 kilometres an hour um, compared to the 170 on the BF Goodridge. However, that's something that we don't really need in our setup. We've set this car up for touring and off-roading. We're not going to be doing 240 kilometers an hour. So um, just something to consider there. Although this tire would be suitable for a GVM upgrade, uh, we've gone for these for that robustness of an off-road tire plus suitability for that GVM upgrade. So uh, in metric terms, when you compare the sizes here, uh, like I said before, you're looking at about a 33.6 inch tire here. The standards are about a 31.5. Um, further to that as well, what you're looking for when you're going off-roading is a decent sidewall. So the sidewall on the standard tyre here is 6.7 inches in height. When you compare that with uh, the BF Goodridge here, you're looking at 7.8 inches. So yes, we could have gone down to a 17 inch rim, however, um, we stuck with the 18s, we still got a decent sidewall there and it's still a strong tyre, so it's going to hold up to what we throw at it. Okay, so moving on to some of the pros and cons. Um, big pro of the stock tyre is fuel. Fuel is, uh, you know, fuel consumption is always a contested issue with these cars. Uh, I've done a lot of modification to this car with weight and size and suspension and whatnot. 
Um, they all increase the fuel consumption, but nothing as much as a tire size. Putting on bigger tires onto your vehicle will increase that fuel consumption quite significantly. Um, not only is it bigger in diameter, so it makes the car work harder to spin that tire, but it is bigger in width as well. So you've got more contact of rubber on the road, more friction there, and again, just making that engine work a little bit harder to get the wheels spinning and keep it moving. The other uh, consideration as well is noise. Uh, so these tires here, just with their size and their uh, tread pattern, the stock tires are going to be a little bit quieter on the road. These BF Goodridges are really good overall. They are a well-designed tire. Uh, they're only an all-terrain, they're not a mud terrain. So they are quite good, but there is a difference there in noise. If you went to a mud terrain, it'd be significantly noisier again. Um, but overall, quite good. So even though these tires are bigger, use more fuel and a little bit noisier, the reason we chose them is they're more suited to what we use them for. So, like I said before, this car is set up for off-roading and touring. These tyres are a strong, robust tyre. They're going to get us anywhere comfortably, both on and off-road. So, uh, for us, it's worth a sacrifice with the fuel and the noise, and they suit our application perfectly. So that's why we've gone for it in this case. So the last thing I wanted to touch on with these wheels here as well, a consideration that we took into account for our car were the weights as well. It's an unsprung weight, it's not a weight that you consider when you're upgrading suspension, but these wheels and tyres do add a significant amount of weight to your vehicle when you chuck them on. So when you're looking at this tyre here, uh, the wheel and tyre combo here, per tyre you're looking at about 34.2 kilos. When you compare that to this rim and tyre that we've got running here, it's 43.6 kilos. So it's a significant increase in weight, and obviously we're carrying five of them, including the spare as well. So overall, you're looking at a difference of 47 kilos just in your wheels and tires. So that's fairly significant um, when you're running a heavy car like we are. Uh, we haven't gone overboard with the stuff we've got in our car, but we're still averaging about three and a half ton mildly loaded. So weight is definitely uh, something that we keep an eye on and a consideration you have to take into account when you're upgrading the wheels and tires. One more thing you need to take into consideration when you are fitting tyres this big, so 33 or above, is some components to go with it, mainly in relation to the suspension. So on my vehicle, I'm running a two inch lift. This is an ARB lift with BP51 remote reservoir shocks. Um, in addition to that, I've had to fit aftermarket upper control arms. So what this does is just bring that caster angle on the front back from zero back to the factory three degrees that it was designed at. This does help bring the front axle forward just that little bit, and it makes a little bit of a difference. You may also notice there's no mud flaps on the, uh, the front wheel arch of this car, so it doesn't fit. Um, I have to do some trimming of the factory plastic there, as well as just push back a small little metal bracket that the uh, mud flaps did bolt onto. Also, in addition to that, I've had to fit a rear adjustable pan hard rod as well. So what that does is just push that uh, rear axle back into the center of the car again. So when you put a lift kit on these cars, you will push that rear axle a little bit. Not so much an issue if you're running with standard tires, but when you are running with negative, uh, positive 25 offset wheels and pushed right out to the guards, they do become quite obvious when that axle moves across. So that adjustable pan hard rod just brings it back to center again and makes it look factory. So uh, just a few components you might have to add to your vehicle to get it all to work. Okay, so something I probably forgot to mention before is the spare wheel. So the Land Cruiser 200s have their factory spare wheel mount underneath the rear of the car. Uh, as you can see here, with these larger tyres, they do hang down a fair amount. So it really does impede on that departure angle of the car. And it does concern me a little bit about damage to the sidewall while you're four-wheel driving before the spare's even been put onto the vehicle. So we're not running a rear bar here, as you can see. Um, it's something I'm going to consider, uh, but I'm not really a fan of the rear bars. So I'll we'll have a think about it, but for the time being, it's just going to stay here. And it's just another one of those factors you have to keep in mind. Also, for those who do want to fit a tyre the same sort of size, these 305, 65, they do fit into the factory spares without any modifications, so there's no issues there. Okay guys, so thanks for watching today's video on why we chose our wheels and tyres for our Land Cruiser 200. I hope you found it interesting and I hope uh, it helped you uh, take into account some of the things you need to think about when choosing a wheel and tyre upgrade for your car. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Cheers.